Welcome to Playfully Orange, uh, our conversations about arts and culture here in Central Florida. My guest today is Joseph or Joey Vasek. Hello, Terry. Thanks for having me on today. Sure. Uh, Joey, you're involved in a lot of musical things, but before we get to that, let's uh, find out a little bit about you. Sure. Um, I understand your first years uh, were as an Air Force kid going to several places, including Anchorage, Alaska. That is correct. Um, we lived on base in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, Elmendorf? Elmendorf Air Force Base. Um, very exciting place to grow up, um, especially in occurrences when you would have a wild moose into your backyard. Um, and so being the rule abiding family we are of course um we actually did not avoid the moose instead we we fed it apples um and that went on for about 10 minutes until a military jeep came off and chased it back into the woods well i'm familiar with moose in the yard because i lived i grew up in alaska so i understand and i i know El elmendorf air force base but that was uh, you're pretty young then i think Yes, uh, very young, uh, around age four to around age seven, but old enough to remember all the fun childhood experiences. And then um, from there, you eventually came to Central Florida. Right. So my dad retired when I was 12 years old. And so I started uh, living in Central Florida and attended Orange County Public Schools through high school. And when did you know that you wanted to be a musician? That was really early in my life. Um, so a quick little backstory. Um, so around this time, I would come home from school and I would practice my trombone um, until my family just could not stand it anymore. Um, so they would kick me off the trombone after a couple of hours and I would gravitate towards the piano. Um, that instrument I didn't study as seriously, but it was certainly amusing, um, and I would play that until they had enough of that, and then it was back to the trombone. And so it was probably entering high school when I decided that there was really nothing else that I would ever want to do with my life except for making music and making music with others. And you've been able to do that? For an entire career thus far. Yeah, I think I've been at it for 27 years. Wow. Is Orlando a good place to be a professional musician? Orlando's a great place to be a professional musician. Um, when I started my career, I had um, won a job with the Orlando Philharmonic. And shortly around that same time frame, I had won a job with the two-day-a-week um, Kids of the Kingdom band at the Magic Kingdom. And so um, with the symphony, we had the standard symphony schedule, and then two days a week, I would do five shows a day at uh, Disney in front of the castle. And then uh, when I wasn't doing any of that, um, I was playing a lot of jazz in some of the various nighttime establishments throughout and probably could have only done that um, for an entire career, but um, Orlando certainly offers a lot more opportunity outside of that. Well, um, it sounds like it was pretty easy to get in. You, you must be a good musician. Um, after high school, did you go to a conservatory or? Eventually. Um, so right out of high school, um, I stayed local. I, I was sort of a homebody a little bit and, and got a nice size scholarship to UCF. And so um, I was playing or, or going to school at, at UCF. Um, and it was two years into that that things sort of opened up for me as a professional trombonist. And so at that point, um, I decided to leave college and just pursue my dreams uh, having the 19-year-old the mindset that, well, this is what I'm going to school to do, and now I'm doing it, so why do I need to be in school? However, um, it was about 10 years later when I thought, you know, I can keep doing this, um, or 
I can I can go back and finish a degree. And I figured it would have to be somewhere that was kind of a dream school for me. And so um, I researched a lot of colleges and and found the teacher of trombone who I wanted to study with, who um, taught at New England Conservatory in Boston. And, and he also played with the symphony and the pops up there as well. And I thought, OK, well, this is the way my career is going. Let me spend some some intensive time in that community. And so so I moved to Boston. And during that time, um, I, I finished the degree in about two years and came back to Orlando, uh, where my fiance at the time was waiting for me. And of course, we soon got married after that. All right. Well, in your career here with all the different kinds of opportunities there are in Central Florida, what's been a highlight? Oh, my goodness. OK, well, there are a ton of highlights, but the one that I talk about the most was three or four summers ago, um, Hollywood Studios uh, had some empty stage space. Um, they were refurbishing one of their shows or something, and they decided to put on this um, Pixar live show, which was a symphony orchestra at a theme park of all places, um, performing all the biggest emotional pooling um, songs from the soundtracks that was um, played concurrently with uh, the movie images behind our heads. And so every day we do three shows a day. And I remember the opening sequence from Up, if you've ever seen that, um, I would look out into the audience and see most people in tears, uh, you know, the, the burliest of burly men uh, wiping their eyes and, and whatnot. And, and that show ran for 92 days. Um, and I think everyone involved dreams uh, that that or something along those lines would come back eventually. That sounds like a great highlight. What's been uh, b the biggest hurdle for you as making a living as, pro as a professional musician? Well, honestly, the biggest thing that, that myself and, and a lot of my colleagues come up across as, as freelancers is that you'll have a couple of open weeks and then all of a sudden you'll get a call and then another call, and then another one from a different person, and, and so on for the same exact dates. And so, so, you know, it'd be really great if all these dozens, maybe hundred uh, art organizations would all just put the calendar together and, and, and make it so easy for us. But um, it's the nature of the business, and, and certainly things like that open opportunities for lots of other musicians as well. You know, um, sometimes I'm the first person, somebody will call for something and sometimes I'm the fifth person. And, and so, you know, within all of those organizations, I think um, that keeps many musicians afloat in the central Florida area. Uh, as you survey the arts and cultural organizations, you mentioned the Philharmonic, the commercial nighttime spots, our theme parks, etc. What does Central Florida? What is Central Florida lacking? What do they? What well, What would you want us to have that we don't? Wow, that's a really good question. I mean, we've got several really great orchestras um, in town. There's the Orlando Philharmonic. There's the Bach Festival Orchestra. Um, we've got some younger up and coming groups in town, like the Orlando Contemporary Chamber Orchestra. Um, there's, there's a lot of jazz that's, that's coming around the state. Uh, however, it would be really great to see more largely organized um, jazz offerings for the community. Uh, I think many of them, if not most of them, are really motivated individuals um, who put projects together and, and find an outlet for those projects that are generally well supported throughout the community. 
Well, yeah, there's jazz kind of pops up here and there uh, throughout the, the ages, doesn't it? It's well, Joey, thank you for uh, your conversation today. Thanks for uh, providing us great uh, trombone music here in Central Florida sure. and uh, being a part of our arts ecosystem. Oh, my pleasure. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of Central Florida in general, and, and I'm really happy that it is a thriving arts culture. You bet. And thank you all for watching this issue of Playfully Orange. I also do a conversation called Diverse Orange about diversity here in Central Florida. Have a great day. Thank you, Terry.